So you go into Jordan. So one of the things you should do beforehand is getting the Jordan Pass. Now this Jordan Pass costs $100 or more depending on you know what kind of package you get. And it pays for the fee for the entrance, for fee for entrance of Petra, you know, the archeological site, which you probably wanna see while you're there, and a lot of other sites. So price value is perfect. It's really, really good to get this beforehand. And do this before, because you can't get it at the airport. And you buy it online, you get a QR code, and then they scan it when you enter the country. And again, you don't have to pay the visa fee, you don't have to pay the entrance for Petra. And depending on how many days you stay in Petra, you know, just one, two, or three, it costs a little bit more but it starts at $100, great price value, so get the Jordan Pass. The best time to visit Jordan is between March and May and from October till December because in summer it can get very, very hot, so it can get quite unbearable. Now, bear in mind, I was there in December and it was already getting quite cold, so definitely bring a jacket because you don't want to freeze. It's not just desert and even in the desert in the night, it gets cold. Now, when it comes to timing, you might travel during Ramadan, which is the holy month where everybody fasts. And it's still possible to travel Jordan. It's no problem. Just be respectful. During this time, uh, Muslims don't eat and drink until the sun goes down. So don't just eat and drink in public or in front of people. Hotel restaurants will still be open, so you still will be able to get served some food. There's a lot of tourists, so you know, not to worry about. You're not gonna be the only one. But just keep in mind that maybe some attractions close a bit earlier because people wanna get home too to eat and break their fast. Now, when it comes to eating and drinking, Jordan is one of the best places to be. Mansaf is like their national, most traditional dish and it consists of lamb and rice and is commonly found on pretty much every menu. And you can also find hummus and falafel everywhere, which is cheap and it's just so good. Now, one of the restaurants I recommend you to go in Amman is called Hashim. Very famous, the king was even there. Very basic food and you know, you just sit on these little tables where they bring you falafel and hummus. Very cheap, fantastic food, you gotta go there. Everybody in Jordan knows it. It's, it's not a secret tip anymore, but it's very good. Really, really recommend it. Now you will definitely enjoy the drinks there. And I don't mean the alcoholic ones because it's a Muslim country, but I mean coffee and tea. Now, the Jordanian tea is typically an infusion of black tea with added herbs, and it can be sage, mint, or others. And it's really a very, very nice taste. Now, Jordanians drink their tea and coffee very sweet. So if you don't want, you know, a lot of sugar added, just mention that beforehand. Now, Jordan is a relatively compact country. You can travel kind of everywhere in like four to five hours. So it's very easy to see a lot of Jordan in a short amount of time. For independent travelers and who are a bit more adventurous, you know, there's the option to rent a car and drive around yourself. Of course, it's different. You gotta be careful, especially in Amman, but it's still possible. It's not as crazy as you would think of. Now, the other option is to rent a driver or a taxi or use the public transport. Now, just bear in mind, the public transport is different than maybe in the Western world. For example, when you take a bus, the bus won't leave until the bus is full. So there is no set time. You could be waiting for, you know, 15 minutes if you're lucky or for an hour and a half like I did when I was there. Another great option for travelers are the jet buses. Now these are buses designated for tourists. They leave on a specific time so you know that it's gonna leave and you know when it's gonna arrive at your destination. And the best is to book the ticket beforehand. Really great option, I used it a lot. Good mix, you know, to just sit back and relax so you don't have to drive, but still, you know that you're gonna leave on time. When you go to the Dead Sea, I recommend you staying there for a night. You will probably go to the Dead Sea to enjoy it. I mean, it's fascinating, you know, to float there, to rub yourself with the mud. But there's a few things to be aware of. First of all, the public beach where the buses usually drop you off, you have to pay entrance and it's around $20, $25. Quite expensive and the mud is not included. There's no food included. There's a lot of people. It didn't really feel that nice to be there. Now, I've heard from other people who went to the resorts that are there, you know. You can pay for a day pass in one of those nice hotel resorts. They have their private beach. There's mud there. Usually food is included and it costs around $35, $40. So it's not that much more if you take into consideration that you also take uh, food at the public beach. So my best tip for you is to go to one of those resorts and book a day pass there. Best, best, best is to stay a night so you can really enjoy it in the night. You know, you can just go to your room, you shower, you can go to the Dead Sea at night as well. You can enjoy it without a lot of tourists and people being there just with the people in your hotel. So that's the best option to maybe just stay a night there. Now there is an option for a free place and it's behind the public beach, but you have to walk a little bit. And so there you don't have to pay. 
everything is for free. Just be aware that the buses don't drop you off at this part. So you kind of have to Google, maybe ask the locals and walk a little bit further to get to that point. But yeah, I mean, if you want, you can definitely go there for free as well, you know, and then head back to Amman with one of the buses. When you go to Petra, please wake up early to be there sharp at 6 a.m to be there before all the tourists arrive. Now the big buses with all the tourists, they usually come at like 9 a.m. and then it's gonna be a completely different experience than when you come early and just have it for yourself. It's, it's magical, it's really beautiful. And I recommend you to be there early, 6 a.m. Now I recommend when you're there, go off a bit of the beaten path. There is two trails that are off the main trail. One is called the Wat al Farasa trail. It's really nice, you, you know, go a bit up the hill, you have a beautiful view, you maybe have the case for yourselves there. And another one is the Treasury Viewpoint Trail. Very beautiful, do that right away when you arrive in the morning, you go there, you have a beautiful view over the Treasury. Most likely there's not gonna be a lot of people because afterwards it's just crowded. Now another thing you can do is Petra by night. It's really, really beautiful. It's Petra during the night and they put up some candles and just, you know, the experience of being there at night very magical but keep in mind you have to buy an extra ticket on top so it's not included in the jordan pass or the normal day pass you have to get a petra by night ticket it costs around 24 dollars some people say it's worth it some people say it's not worth it i haven't done it because all the tickets were booked out but i heard from a lot of people that they just loved it and just the experience of being there by night you know the stars you sit in front of the treasury that's magical and Go there late, you know, just right before it starts because then you may be one of the last ones who go through the canyon. And that's a very magical experience by itself. Just, you know, the canyon lit by the candles. When you go to the Wadi Rum Desert, you're probably gonna stay in one of those Bedouin camps. Now, please don't do it like me to just show up there and book your stuff there. Book everything beforehand. Book the hotel, book the tour you're gonna do, the Jeep ride, whatever you have in mind. Do that before. Because when you arrive there, they will pick you up. Every camp will pick you up at the, at the starting point and then they will bring you to the camp, you know. And when you arrive there and you haven't booked anything, you know, you will have to book it there. And then you pretty much are in the hands of the owner because he can just dictate a price and you can just hop to another camp because you can't get there, you know. There's just a jeep of the camp that would have to bring you back to the starting point and then another one would have to pick you up. So book all this stuff beforehand so you know the price. People can scam you. And if you're a solo traveler, maybe, you know, you meet some others where you can arrange it together because that pulls down the price. One of the first questions people might say is, oh, you're going to Jordan, is that even safe? And yes, it is absolutely safe. I can tell you, no problem at all. There's a lot of tourists coming there every, every year. You won't have any problems. You might be a little bit overwhelmed because you know of the Arab craziness. That's definitely for sure. I mean, I had that when I arrived. It's just a craziness that's different to what we're used to. Now, the only thing you should be aware of is scams. And that's, you know, normal in a lot of tourist places, especially in Petra. Now, there's so many tourists coming and there's gonna be a lot of scams, you know, people trying to sell you something. They maybe put like a wristband on you to say it's for free and then it's not for free. They're the horses that bring you to Petra where you have to go through the canyon. They say that's for free. It is technically for free, but in the end they want a hefty tip. So don't do the horses. Just be aware of the scams. Another thing that's really dangerous in Jordan is the traffic. So be aware in Amman, especially when you cross the streets, people drive a bit crazier there. So what I learned, you know, just put out the hand. That's kind of like a sign, like I'm coming, please slow down a bit. That kind of helps. And you know, just maybe look for a local that you can go behind. Um, so yeah, just be aware of scams and the traffic. Everything else, fine. You're gonna be completely, completely safe. Now, when it comes to clothing, it's a Middle Eastern country. So, of course, women tend to dress a bit more conservative. Now, I don't want you to wear, you know, wear your things. You can wear shorts, you can wear tank tops, especially in those uh, beach side cities and resorts. I mean, it's no problem at all. But just be aware that it is a Muslim country and you want to be respectful. Now, the only thing is when you want to visit religious sites, such as mosques, you know, your knees have to be covered up, your shoulders. Women will have to wear a headscarf. Everything else, completely fine. And the last thing, the last tip I can give you is do a free walking tour when you're in Amman. Great, great thing because you can really experience the city by a local. And you go to places that you normally won't go to. I mean, the one I did, there's plenty, but the one I did was the one with Mohammed Ezzat. And you know, he's born in the city, he's lived there his whole life. So it was really interesting to get the view of the city by a local. And he took us to some places like the gun market where I normally would have never went. So really do that because you get a really great insight of what the city is about and what makes it live and breathe 
and why it's so special to the locals. Overall, you're gonna have a fantastic time in Jordan. It's a great country, great people, fantastic food. And if you, you know, keep those little tricks and tips in mind, I guarantee you, you will have a fantastic vacation.